Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt, and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now I've got another caddis dry fly pattern for you today. This one is called the Peacock Caddis. Now I couldn't find a whole lot of history on this other than it was created by Jim Bonnet. Now he was from Montana. He ran a fly shop in the 80s with Glenn West called the Classic Angler. Now I couldn't find out a whole lot of information about the shop other than it was probably somewhere near Billings. They mentioned the Bighorn River as one of the local waters. So about this fly that Jim Bonnet created. It's just a caddis dry fly. Uh, it's got some of the greatest materials for any fly out there. It's got elk hair or deer hair for the wing, some brown and grizzly hackle up front, and then peacock curl for a body. Now who doesn't love peacock curl in their flies? Now one other thing to mention, I got this pattern from Randall Scott Stetzer's book, Flies the Best 1000. Now I really love this book. I'm going to have to do a review on it soon. I mean, just for example, there are a thousand flies in here. Uh, he's got six pages of caddis dry flies. Imagine that, 60 flies that are, you know, caddis dry flies. So it's a pretty awesome book. I will definitely do a review soon. So about today's pattern, just a general caddis dry fly. Pretty easy to tie, really cool looking. I think you're going to like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, Peacock Caddis. I'm tying this on a size 14. It's a 1X long dry fly hook. And I'm gonna put down a base of black 70 to deer all the way to the start of the bend. Now for the body, one strand of Peacock Earl. Now, if you notice Peacock Earl, some of the fibers are longer on one side than they are on the other. This one, you can't necessarily tell, but if they are, try to catch it in so that your first wrap is gonna have the shorter fibers um, closer to the hook. That way you'll have the long fibers sticking out perpendicular to it and it'll just give you a little fuller body. So I'm gonna take my thread back up a little bit more than the two thirds point. I'm gonna put a half hitch in it and then part my thread because I'm gonna use the rotary function. If you don't have a rotary vise, no big deal. It'll just take you about 30 seconds longer. But if you do, that's pretty convenient for wrapping bodies like this. So just be careful with the first couple of wraps that point of your hook will break this peacock curl if you're not careful. But after you get past the point of the hook, you can go a little faster. Okay, that is a long enough body right there. So I'm going to catch it in right there. Two wraps should be fine with this peacock curl. Maybe a third wrap, hold it tight, you can break it. Now I'm going to take my thread a little bit forward of that body where I'm going to catch in the deer hair on the wing. So take a, a small, a fairly small clump, I would say less than you do for an elk hair caddis. Put it in your stacker and then pull out the tips after you've got them even. And let's measure the length. So we want it not that long, maybe just to the bend of the hook or a little bit longer. So I'm gonna go about right there. My thread is hanging where I'm gonna catch it in. But what I will do here is before I tie it in, I'm gonna go back here right behind the eye and then snip it. It'll just save us a step later, might make it a little cleaner. So I'm gonna take this, a pinch wrap right on top with, I didn't catch them all, so I'm gonna need to do another one. And I've got this, this deer hair a little closer to my side than the camera side. It jumped on me there because it will spin on you. And you'll see as soon as I let it go that it's gonna have a tendency to want to spin. So you see that it's going a little bit around to the toward the camera. So before I really lock it in, I'm going to just try to bring it back a little closer to my side here. And if you need to, what you can do is lift it up carefully so you don't pull them out and then just put a wrap right up under them. Now that will hopefully help keep it from trying to spin. Now it is flared up, which we don't want on this fly. So what you'll do now is just take a couple of medium wraps going back to lay it back down flat. And so that's fine there. Now I can go back up here with some tighter wraps. 
So that wing is positioned on top like I want. I might need to trim a little bit of these guys right here so my head will be cleaner when we're done. So let's see if we can just clean this up a little bit. Might not be able to get them too much, but that's fine. Okay, so the wing looks fine. The body is about the length we want. Now take a brown and grizzly hackle, dry fly hackle, size to match your hook. I'm gonna catch these in both at the same time. I've got them laid, you know, concave sides together. And I've got enough bare stem right here that I can catch these in with a little bit of the bare stem showing. Two or three good wraps right here. And just be careful you don't spin everything around on you. So that's some tight wraps right there. I'm going to go ahead and snip these butt ends off. I got a little bit of something on my thread right there. It might be a nick in my thread, but if so, I take a few extra wraps to get rid of that. Okay, now we want our thread up here where we're going to finish wrapping this hackle. And if you don't have a brown and grizzly, just use one or the other, that would be fine. And you'd probably get about five wraps. With doing two, I might be able to get about three wraps each before it starts getting just too crowded on me. So that, that is two right there. So I think I'm gonna have to stop right there before I get too far up on my eye. And maybe I'll be able to get three with the brown. So we'll see. Probably so, because I can start that brown right behind the grizzly and get one full wrap before I even get to the, the grizzly. So let's try a, a full wrap right here and then we'll just work this brown through this grizzly. Uh, zigzag it a little bit so you're, you're not trapping too many of them. Okay, now that's getting a little bit bushy on me so I wasn't counting if that was two wraps or three. Either way, that's where I'm gonna end it. So we've got a few fibers pointing forward. Before I snip off this brown excess, I'm gonna just pull these back and then work on my head, give me a little bit of room to for the whip finish. Okay. I think that's gonna be fine right there. Now let's whip finish it and then we'll have a little bit of cleanup to do. Try not to trap any extra fibers there. I've already gotten a few trapped, so three or four turn right here should be fine. Now snip off this excess. And do we have any cleanup? Yeah, we got a few sticking forward right here. Just snip these off. Give us some room for the head cement. And we'll be good to go. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Peacock Caddis, not too difficult to tie. Pretty effective pattern. Take care, and we'll see you next time.